Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, we are back on the Monarch restoration and today is the day we're gonna to try to put the apron back up underneath the, the saddle here. So this is a saddle that rides on the ways. The apron is the part that comes down in the front that has all the controls and stuff on it. Uh, all that also is connected to some rods that come out of here for both your threading and your feeds, uh, as well as an on-off rod. So all this stuff has got to get put back on and that is what we're gonna work on today. So let's get at it. So the first thing I wanna do getting this put together is, is we need to put the clamps that actually clamp everything together here. So this, the saddle sits on top of the ways, it goes back and forth, but there are a series of some clamps like this one right here. This is the carriage lock and it goes up underneath the bottom of this. And basically on this particular one, uh, there's a bolt that goes down through here with a screw on the top. And when you tighten this up, it actually locks the carriage in place. So if you're doing something like facing a piece of metal or using a, um, a cutoff tool, you can, uh, actually lock your carriage in place. I'm gonna go ahead and just put this in. I'm not gonna lock it, but I do wanna go ahead and kind of tighten it up. So you really can't see up underneath this carriage very well, but that is there right there. I'm just gonna leave, leave it loose. Like I said, you just put a wrench on there and you can tighten that up. When you do, it locks it in place. When it's unlocked, it moves. Now, in addition to that, there's two additional clamps on the front that go up underneath the bottom. And these are not tightening on there per se. They're just on there. There's actually a little bit of a gap in the bottom, but what this does is this prevents the carriage from, uh, yeah, the saddle from lifting up, from coming up at all. So uh, there's two of these. So I'm gonna get some bolts and uh, get up under here and we'll put those in. These get tightened up all the way. Like I said, they're not clamps. Uh, the, the saddle should still move with these tightened up. Had a viewer contact me uh, just the other day that was trying to get a, trying to get a saddle and, and all this separated and couldn't get it loose, wouldn't come up. And the reason was is they had these uh, locks and it was behind the apron where they couldn't see them. So they had to get up underneath there and get those out before they could actually separate the apron from the saddle. We've got our first block put in now. You can see the carriage is moving back and forth very nicely, but it's not lifting up, which is exactly what we want. We got a second block in here. Go ahead and get this one installed as well. Once again, I'm faced with the challenges of having to work alone out here in my shop, but um, I've got the apron here just kind of sitting up on the bed of the lathe or the, the pan of the lathe. And I'm down here on the end because the pan drops down deep in this area. But right here, I got a little shelf for it to sit on. So I've slid my, my uh, saddle all the way down. I've kind of got the apron just kind of tucked up underneath there. And now the challenge is, is I need to kind of get it up where I can bolt it down. There are eight um, cap head screws that drop down through here that line up with the apron below and basically pull it up tight. And again, working by myself, this is gonna be a challenge, but I think what I'm gonna try to do is use some blocks of wood up underneath this to kind of get it in place. Uh, first thing I need to do is just kind of slide it back in here a little bit more. I've got the rods in here because they basically have to come out with the apron and I got them just kind of balanced where they're not pulling too much on one side or the other. Let's see here. I seem to be able to get back here in the back easier than I can up there in the front. So let's start back here. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, I think I got a little bite there. That's a positive sign. All right. Now let's see if I can get one to grab up here on the front end. I think that might be threading. Look at there. Yes, sirree. All right. I believe that we have her attached. I'll take these shims out from the bottom. If all is good, uh oh, that's not engaged. There we go. Look at there. All right. All right. Good job. All right. Well, after a little bit of pig wrestling, I think we've got the carriage back together. Uh, I've just got a couple of screws holding it in right now in case I need to make some fine adjustments or what have you. Uh, but it is snug up on here and we're engaged. So my next step is down here. I've got the two rods that come through here. This top one is the uh, lead screw for doing threading work. The bottom one is the feed rod. So you got two different rods. So these rods are going to be spinning on the lathe at whatever speed you have them set up with over here on the quick change gearbox. The top one, of course, is your lead screw. This is for threading. The bottom is, is for feeds and uh, it's going to be for just your, your how fast the, the cutter is going to be feeding in when you're threading or when you're cutting rather. So these have got to go in. There's gears on the end that engage up in here and uh, basically these are just going to bolt in place. So I'm just going to roll her down there and uh, we'll get them get them put in there uh, we're just going to ease these forward and to get that gear tooth engaged just right there we go same thing down here. Let's see what we got going on here. All right, well, after playing around with this for a few minutes, I think I figured out what's wrong. Uh, it's not wanting to go in far enough. The gear's bottoming out in the bottom and it needs to go in a little bit farther. And I got noticing there was a little bit of play in here. This thing wasn't tight like it should be. And then it hit me what I had done. I had taken this gear off previously and when I put it on, I put it on backwards. It needs to go the other way. That should give me the clearance I need. So we got a tapered pin in here holding this in place. Let's see which direction it needs to go out. All right, let's, uh, there it goes. So there's my pin. This gear should come off. We're going to turn it back around the other way, put it back on, and we should be able to drive our pin back in. Got it now. I'm gonna now let's uh, try this again. There we go. I believe we've got it. So let me get some screws now and uh, get all these covers put back on. And I think we're gonna have that part done. There we go. 
I remember taking these out. It was really aggravating to get to the ones in the back back there, but I uh, had to get in there just a turn at a time, but we'll get these going. I probably won't make you, I won't make you sit through all this, but we'll get these uh, all put back in. All right, so last thing I got down here is we need to put a pin in this uh, little collar. There's a collar that goes right here, and there's just a spring pin, roll pin, whatever you want to call it. It goes through here. This is a new one. I replaced the one that was in here before. I'm just going to take this punch and drive it on in there. Could use an extra hand here. I only got two. That's about it. All right, that is it. Very good. And that just keeps that from uh, moving back and forth in there. So that's got all that buttoned up. Looks good. All right, next step. So next step, guys, we got a third rod down here. It's a square rod, and this is basically just a, it's an on-off switch for the machine. I've got this lever disconnected right now so I can move it down where I can work on it, but uh, when you push this down, it engages the, the headstock, and when you pull it up, it disengages it. So it's basically the clutch. And uh, there's another handle that goes on the apron uh, where you can control it from the apron as well as from right here and this rod controls that. So uh, you got this handle and inside of this handle we got a little um, bushing that goes in here that basically goes from round to square. Okay, I'm going to put that in there and then you have the square rod that fits up in here and then holding all that together is a tapered pin. I got a tapered pin right here. This is when we pulled out and we actually uh, had to drill part of it to get this one to come out. It was it was in there really bad. So I'm needing to replace this pin. And unfortunately, it's, it's, it looks like that, well, I wasn't able to find the exact right pin. I guess is what I'm getting at here. So I had to actually go up a size in pins. And I got one that almost comes out the bottom, but it's not quite um, enough to come out the bottom. The problem we was running into is a, a number five pin. This looks like a number five pin, but the, the head on a number five pin, the head on these pins stays constant. And then as you get longer, it tapers down to a smaller diameter. Uh, and the problem on this is a standard number five pin was actually going in beneath this uh, the sur surface here. I don't know exactly what's going on there. So I had to go up a size to a number six pin and get a long one. And what we'll do is we'll just cut this off. But Right now, the number six pin isn't quite going down through there far enough, so I got a tapered reamer right here, and we're gonna have to work on this a little bit and actually ream that hole out just a little bit oversized uh, so that we can get the new pin to go in there. And then once I get the new pin in there, we will uh, cut it to the proper length and hopefully all should be good. So let me uh, work on this tapered uh, reamer here for a few minutes and uh, it's real tight quarters, but I'm just going to basically spin this thing around until it opens that hole up a little bit more to be able to get that pin to go down about another, really all it needs is about three-eighths of an inch farther in the hole, and we should be good to go. So let me work on this for a few minutes. So we should be ready to put our new pin in. I've already cut it off here, hopefully to length. That should work just fine. All right. Next thing we're going to install is this little handle. It mounts right down here. And this is, again, your on-off lever. It connects to the square uh, rod that we've been working on. So it's going to slide on the end down here. And it's a little bit stiff coming on. Uh, once it gets on, it goes real good here. A little bit more. There we go. So it's going to come down here, and there's two bolts on the bottom that bolt up under the bottom of the apron. Let me uh, put that on there to raise it up roughly where it needs to be. And
tighten these bolts up on the bottom. We guys, I lost a little bit of audio, so uh, I'm gonna just kinda tell you what we did, and I'll probably tr uh, overlay some of that video on here while I show them what I did, but if you see down here on this end of the machine, uh, we had to put this little support block on, and it's just a casting that goes up on here. There's three holes, one for each rod, and there's just basically some bronze bushings up inside of that that allow them to, to rotate. On the square rod down here, just like with the other ones, we got a little adapter that has the three quarter inch square hole in it and has a, you know, basically takes it to round so that it can rotate in there. And fairly straightforward, put it on there, a couple of bolts, hold it in place, mark that off the list. One thing that I am gonna to have to address down here is this handle uh, that engages and disengages. So again, the square rod that goes through here is just turning the, it's going to the clutch that turns the spindle on and off. On the lathe, uh, you push it down, it engages, you pull it up, it disengages. Problem I've got is again, we got that little square uh, hole through here, we got a little round piece in here that mounts into this. And over time, that thing has worn significantly. You see how much slop is in there. So what I need to do is just actually just get a piece of metal, turn it to fit the right diameter and then drill and broach a square hole in there. Uh, I've got several square brooches over there uh, in my cabinet up to about half inch. I don't have a three quarter inch. So I'm gonna have to find me a three quarter inch square brooch to be able to make that little plug. Uh, but uh, we'll find one, we'll get that done sometime or another. So over here on the apron, you probably noticed I had a steel piece of piping coming out right here. Um, I've actually cut it off now and got it plumbed in, but if you look right here, it comes up from down here and there's a little fitting up in the bottom of the, uh, the saddle in this little piece of pipe plumbed in there. And basically what this is, is it's a lubrication system. So if you remember, if you go back and watch the videos where we worked on the, the apron here, and we worked on the, the, the saddle, uh, there's an oil pump. There's a reservoir down here in the bottom of the, of the machine that holds oil. There's an, actually a little oil pump over here on the end. And it's connected, uh, or it has a little plunger on there. So it works just kind of like a, a squirt oil can would where you pull the lever and when you pull the lever, it squirts oil. Same principle here, but instead of pulling the lever, that lever is actuated by a little cam that is on this hand wheel. So as the carriage is moving up and down, whether you're doing it by hand or whether you're doing it in automatic feed, uh, there's, there's a little cam lobe on this shaft that pumps that pump. And that pump is pumping oil up. It comes through this, this tube and goes into the bottom of the, the uh, saddle. And there's a distribution block in here that's basically like a little manifold. Uh, and coming out of that manifold, there's, there's uh, meters. So there's a little piece that screws in there. And it's, it actually meters out the same amount of oil out of each one of those holes. When you, when you pressurize it, it's only gonna, it's gonna put equal pressure out on each, each port. And that's important because if, uh, it's gonna be plumbed to multiple places in here. And if you don't have those meters in there, the oil is gonna take the path of least resistance. So if one of the tubes gets clogged or whatever, um, it's, it's just it's gonna to go to the one that has the least resistance. So by putting those meters in there, you're constantly pushing the same amount out of each one. And that helps kind of keep the, the whole system flushed out. Uh, there are all oil, oil that's actually going down into the gears and stuff here in the apron. It all drains back down to the bottom, of course, is recycled. But then it's also pumping it up here like on the ways. So there's actually uh, two little oil places right here, uh, one on each side where the oil comes right here. So some people ask, how does oil get into those oil grooves that I cut in the bottom of uh, this cross slide? Well, that's it right there. So the oil is pumping up and it's actually coming in right here. So when this is moving back and forth, it's constantly picking up new oil. Uh, and same thing as oiling the, the, the nut in here for the, for the cross slide. It's 
basically is putting oil everywhere it needs to go to. It's putting oil on the ways over here, so there's uh, holes all around through these things. Very cleverly engineered, but we had to get this tube put in here, and I just, I, you know, I cut it off to the length. This is what this was the extra that was on there. I had some extra fittings, so it's just a little compression nut is all it is. So there's a little, uh, a little brass ferrule or whatever in there, and when you tighten this bottom piece up into the plug in the bottom, it compresses this and makes a, a nice oil tight seal. So anyway, we got all that done. Uh, it was a little bit aggravating. Uh, this this steel pipe doesn't bend very easily and trying to get it to the exact right length and getting it in there took a little bit of fiddling but hey we got it it's all done there so got that knocked out we have our oil system is uh, ready to go so i should be able to put oil in here and it should be able to start pumping uh, as soon as i do we've got a couple of tapped holes here on the front of the saddle and uh, the big one right here what this is is it takes basically this right here. So there's it's threaded on one end, but then there's uh, basically just a dowel pin in there. And what that does is that goes in here and it actually goes into the, the apron behind it and it gives a little a dowel pin for this thing to hang on. Uh, so that puts some of the weight on there. That just screws in here. Um, when I got the lathe, one of these was missing. And the other one, you can see the head is really kind of boogered up on it. There's also another one that goes up in the top up here on the, uh, on the cross slide that goes into the nut. So I think I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make three new of these on the lathe and uh, just put some, basically put some new ones in here. I'm going to have to make one anyway because I'm missing one, uh, but the other two are just kind of beat up. So I, I'm going to do that. That'll be a little bit later on. Now, this little tapped hole, when I got it, there was just some little short bolts in here and a washer on the outside. I'm really not sure what those were for. Uh, and I suspect that these were, somebody drilled and tapped these in. I don't think those were original. Um, but anyway, I'm not exactly sure what the purpose was on those. But uh, like I said, I, I don't think they're original. I'm probably just gonna put a, a little socket set screw in there just to plug up that hole, just so they don't get filled up with the, uh, dirt and grime uh, because I don't really think that that serves any real function for me. And with that, I think that's going to be a wrap on this episode. So we've got the apron back together. The lathe is starting to finally start looking like a lathe again. Everything uh, really works good and nice and smooth. I'm really tickled with how all this uh, is really fitting together now that we're getting it scraped back in and getting it all back together. So what do we got left to do uh, before we're gonna have this thing finished? Well, I've still gotta get my, my screw and nut put in here to adjust the cross slide. And uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, I'm gonna have to make a new nut. The, the nut that's in here, the bronze nut, it's just got a lot of wear in there, a lot of backlash, and uh, I'm just not happy with it. So we're gonna be making a new bronze nut to go in here. I think the screw's in pretty good shape. Um, I'll know better once I have a, 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 a good, nut to put on there to really kind of see if there's any real wear in that uh, screw itself. I don't really think there's going to be significant wear or enough to have to worry about making a new screw. Um, from there, we got to work on the compound up here and I get all this scraped in. So there's a, a bottom that gets scraped in to match this plate here. And then of course we have the uh, ways very similar to here. You got the dovetail and then you got the piece that slides on top of that. And um, a little bit more scraping to do there. Once that's done though, uh, we're pretty much home free. Uh, I still got to do the taper attachment back here. Of course, I don't have to have that right away, uh, but I do want to go ahead and get all that rebuilt. Uh, I haven't done anything to it yet. It's just kind of sitting down here in the pan of the machine. And the other, the other thing I got to do is just get the tailstock in. There's really nothing wrong with the tailstock. It just needs to be taken apart, cleaned up, repainted. Uh, I might need to adjust the height of it a little bit. I haven't really tested that yet, but uh, we'll check that out when we work on the tailstock. But we are starting to get into the short rows, it looks like, on this. And uh, hopefully we're going to have this uh, lathe up and going soon. That's my goal. Uh, I'm ready to get this machine finished. So anyway, a little summary of where we've been today, what we've still got left to do, making progress. We're going to knock this thing out. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. Leave me a thumbs up if you like what you see. Uh, leave me comments. Shoot me an email if you like. And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, and with that, we'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks for watching.